Hi everyone, it's Tahira, and today I'm bringing you this fun birthday shaker card. It's inspired by my own challenge, Cure for the Monday Blues, which is a photo inspiration challenge. We're going to be featuring a lot of different techniques, so let's get started. First thing to do is prepare the card base. This is pink shimmer cardstock from Paper Tray Ink, and I'm just preparing an A2 card base by making a cut at four and a quarter inches with my paper trimmer. Next, I'm going to be scoring the card base at five and a half inches using my score buddy. And then I'm going to be uh, folding the card and creasing the fold using my scoring tool. So you can see me just preparing the card base by butting it up against the edge of the score buddy and creasing my fold like so. I'm also preparing a separate piece of cardstock at um, the actual size of the A2 card base and I'm going to be die cutting a frame from it using the Femme Frames die from Mama Elephant. Just positioning the die on top of the panel of cardstock and I'm going to use some washi tape to just keep that in place. So I'm just positioning the die properly and making sure that I've got it nicely centered as much as possible and here I come now with my washi tape I'm going to just tape this in place. I'm now getting my big shot and I'm positioning my cardstock and my die on top of the multi-surface platform with the cutting side of the die facing up and I'm now getting my second cutting plate and placing that on top and die cutting this through to create the frame. With my die cutting now done, I'm just peeling off the washi tape so that I can separate the cardstock from the die. So just carefully peeling that off at an angle so that I minimise any risk of actually tearing any of the cardstock. I'm now putting some quarter inch score tape around all the edges of the reverse of the die cut frame and this will be so that I can attach some acetate to the back of the frame. This will create the see-through window that we use for the shape of card technique. So with that backing paper removed, I can now adhere a piece of acetate to the back of the frame. I've cut this to the same size as the A2 card base, and I'm just going to adhere this on the back using that score tape to keep it in place. It's at this point that I remember that I actually wanted to do some stamping on top of the acetate before I adhered it, but never mind, we'll just carry on as is. Um, I'm going to be using this Mama Elephant set called Make-A-Wish, and I'm using this large Happy Birthday to You sentiment. I'm going to be stamping it onto the acetate using Versamark ink, and this is so that I can heat emboss it afterwards with white embossing powder. Um, before I do that, I just want to make sure that no stray granules of embossing powder get stuck on the acetate, so I'm using my EK Success powder tool to just prep the surface and the edges to make sure that none of that um, adhesive or any static will keep any of the embossing powder stuck on it. Having done that, I can now ink up my stamp with, the, with my Versamark ink and I can stamp this on top of the panel. Um, when you're stamping onto acetate, it is very easy to actually smudge the image because the acetate is naturally a slippery surface. So you want to stamp down firmly and precisely. And you also want to make sure that you lift the stamp straight off in a vertical fashion without angling it at all. This will help prevent or hopefully minimise any risk of that acetate shifting and creating a smudged image. So having done that, I'm now going to get my embossing powder. This is well opaque white embossing powder and I'm going to be heat embossing the sentiment with that. Just putting a piece of paper underneath to catch the stray embossing powder. And now I can actually sprinkle that powder on. Um, I'm going to sprinkle it very carefully over the acetate so that I minimise any risk of getting it stuck in the corners. Um, and then I'm just going to tip this upside down and get rid of the excess and also flick the back of the acetate to remove any stray granules. Inadvertently you'll find that there will be some stray granules of embossing powder on that acetate and you can remove these using a very fine paintbrush which is what I'm going to do now. Just being very very careful with where I touch that paintbrush to the acetate so that I don't take off any of the powder that I don't want to. Uh, just take your time when you're doing this step. Uh, there's no rush and you want to be precise so that you get good results. Before actually heat embossing, I'm just going to heat up my heat tool for a few seconds to make sure that it's good and hot before I actually apply it to the acetate. Not only will this help the powder melt faster, but it will also minimise the risk of that uh, acetate warping from the heat. So you want to just get the heat embossing tool good and hot and then heat the powder very quickly. 
You also want to make sure that you're not heating the same place for too long, so keep moving the acetate around and hopefully it will help minimise the warping. You'll see that my panel is still a bit warped after this and I'm just bending it back into shape. Having done everything to prepare the frame now, I now want to focus on the white panel that is inside the shaker. Inspired by the white lace tablecloth in the inspiration image, I wanted to recreate this in my own way, so I'm taking this heart doily die from Clear and Simple Stamps and I'm going to impress it into the cardstock surface. So I'm taking the first tab off my multi-purpose platform, putting my cutting plate down, and then I'm taking my die and I'm putting it on top of my cardstock and flipping it over so the cutting side is facing up. And I'm now going to be using these tan and vanilla mats from Paper Tray Ink. These are silicon mats or rubber mats and you just place them on top of the cardstock, put the other cutting plate on top and then you just run this through your die cutting machine as normal. And once you've done that you'll see that the cardstock actually has that wonderful heart doily texture impressed into it. Lovely effect. Next I wanted to create my own custom shaker filling. So I'm going to be using this star confetti die from Studio Calico to die cut a bunch of stars to look just like those sprinkles in the inspiration image. So I'm going to be using a whole bunch of different cardstock colours. Um, so I'm going to use leaf shimmer cardstock, lemon tart, uh, shimmer pink, orange zest, spring rain cardstock all from paper tray ink, um, pure white cardstock from Avery L and VIP purple cardstock from clear and simple stamps. I'm just getting my die and putting it on top of my big shot and because this is quite a fine detailed die you might want to use a metal shim underneath the die to help cut those stars a bit more carefully. So having placed my metal shim down I'm now putting my cutting plate on top and just running this through my big shot as normal and this will create all those wonderful little stars. There's a few different sizes of stars created by this die and it just adds to that wonderful sprinkles effect. Um, because this is a very detailed die, you might find that some of the die cuts actually get stuck inside the die itself. Um, to remove these, you can just rub a piece of washi tape over and you can then pull it up and you will get some of those stars out. So having run this through my die cutting machine several times with all those pieces of cardstock, I have all these wonderful stars in lots of different sizes and colours. Um, I also have these negative pieces of cardstock left over and I'm not going to throw these away, I'll keep these for another project, they could add a very interesting background or layer to a different card. So before I start actually preparing my shaker and putting it together now, I want to just adhere that white panel to my actual pink shimmer card base and to do this I'm going to be using score tape. I'm using two and a half inch, one and a half inch and one quarter inch score tape on the back and if you don't get the score tape lined up exactly on the back, you can always use a pair of non-stick scissors to trim off the excess. I've shown this tip in other videos, but I felt it was worth repeating. So to line up my card panel and my card base exactly, I'm going to use my score buddy and just push the card base into the corner of the score buddy, um, peeling off the back of my score tape release paper, and I'm just going to butt that panel right into the corner along with the card base, and you can see that adheres it nice and straight to the card base. I want there to still be some interest when all of the shaker content has fallen to the bottom of the card. So I'm just placing some of the stars and I'm going to glue them directly onto the background panel. Um, to do this I'm going to be using some multi matte medium and I'm going to be picking up the stars using this quick stick. It has a really um, useful pointer that pulls out of the bottom and an adhesive tip so that you can pick up different uh, embellishments, dip them into the glue as so and then just use the reverse of that tip to push the embellishment in place. So I'm going to adhere all of those stars and now I'm ready to actually add some shaker filling. So I'm going to take several handfuls of all those different coloured and different sized stars and just sprinkle them into the centre here. Um, I'm going to add a few more handfuls until I feel that's enough and I also want to add some sequins so I'm going to be using these sequins from Simon Says Stamp. They're clear sequins in lots of different sizes. I'm just going to sprinkle some of those in as well, not too many. Um, and I also wanted a bit more colour from the sequins, so I'm taking these pink lem lemonade sequin mix from Neat and Tangled and I'm going to add some of those sequins to the mix as well. So having added all the sequins and all the stars that I want, I'm now ju just going to move the rest of those aside and I can be ready to actually assemble my shaker itself. To do this I'm going to be using Pin Flare Glue Gel. I've mentioned this in other videos before and I use it for practically everything. Um, it's really really good for adding dimension, so what I'm going to do with it this time is I'm going to use it on the back of my frame to build up a custom depth of dimension with that glue gel. 
So you can see me just placing a line of the adhesive all the way around using my syringe. And I'm actually going to go back over, you'll see me doing it now, with a second layer of adhesive right over the top of the first layer. Um, I repeat this all the way around and this gives me a really good high level of dimension. And the really great thing is that you can customise this to be as high or as shallow as you want. So I'm just spreading that sequin filler out a little bit now. I've left the glue gel to dry a little bit so that the adhesive is more or less dry. And that means I won't lose too much of my dimension. So you can see some finished stills of the card now. I added some more stars on top of the acetate and this finishes off the card for today. If you want any more details, please head to my blog. Thanks so much for watching. Check me out again soon. Bye!